Appreciate it so very much for your prayers. I want you to turn for a few minutes to 2 Timothy. For just a few minutes, 2 Timothy, in verse no, chapter number 3. This is on page 1280. 1280. 2 Timothy two, uh, 3, and verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I want to talk about perilous times for a few minutes today. Now, it seems pretty clear to me that perilous times are upon us already. And there has never been such universal evil and hatred and lust and murder and cruelty than we're seeing today. In my lifetime, I've never seen it like it is today. And we have things going on right now that are absolutely breathtaking. The, the populace has taken the freedoms and, and the uh, blessings of God that God has poured out upon this earth, and they have abused these things, and they have misused these things, and even in our good old America, we have forgotten God. In many ways, we have forgotten God. Now, I want to say to you, my friend, America is not the Savior of the world. America is the greatest country on earth today, I do believe, and I love America with all my heart. But America is not going to save us. Amen. We better look far beyond America uh, for our salvation. And I'm glad that I have the answer today, thank God. I remember when I started out in the ministry over 50 years ago, uh, hearing the words of beer companies saying and proclaiming that they one day would have everybody in America drinking beer. Well, now they pretty uh, they've come pretty close to that. Only dedicated Christian people uh, are the ones mostly that are refraining from uh, drinking beer. It's everywhere. Ball players that used to would not dare uh, advertise beer in front of young people. They drink it and they brag about it and boast about it. We've got players, ball players, that are as evil as anybody else in the world. They should be setting an example to our young people, but they don't care about our young people. And so, my friend, I'm not saying this for every individual now. I'm just saying over the whole scope of this thing, we've got people that are not thinking uh, sanely about the dangers that we are in. Our schools have taught the lie of evolution and humanism for these years also. And teachers have cast doubts about God in the minds of our children. Listen, child, here today, if you never hear another thing I say, don't ever let any teacher or professor tell you that God is not real. Don't listen to that. God is real and God's going to be the answer to our the problems before this thing is over. People are going to want God. I promise you that. So don't let these little foolish professors and teachers that think they've got it all figured out uh, cast, your, cast down your mind about who our Savior is. His name is Jesus Christ. And amen. He'll be the Savior when all of those people are roasting in hell. So my friend, we now have leaders with no backbone. Our leaders are afraid of other countries and other religions. In the past, that was not the way it was. We don't fight our enemies to win, but we let demon-possessed idiots jerk us around by the nose, so to speak. We have become reprobate throughout this great country of ours that has been called at times a Christian nation. I know America is not a Christian nation. Now, I say there are a lot of Christians in America, but this whole nation is not Christian. There are some infidels in this place. There are some hell raisers in this place. There's some people that want to damn your soul in hell in this place. Hollywood, you can't call that Christian. Hollywood is Hollywood. And brother, I tell you, you can't even look at a modern day movie and, and, and feel good when you get through watching it. So I don't watch those modern, I mean it, I don't watch modern day movies. I'd rather go back and on the satellite and find Roy Rogers or Gene Autry or Buck Jones, Lice LaRue. I might look at that, but all this other old dirty tobacco running out each side of their mouth, cursing like everything, hadn't taken a bath in four years, all that dirty old, that's Hollywood, that's their heart, that's the way their heart is, it's filthy, and so young people don't fall into the track, these tra uh, cracks that are out there. there, there are potholes everywhere, and the devil wants you to fall into some of them. Now we try to negotiate with liars like Iran, that cannot be done. 
We fail to recognize our enemies by name. Our own president will not call radical Islam radical Islam. He is one of the most ridiculous minds that I've ever listened to in all my years of listening to people. And I tell you, my friend, in my opinion, he needs a good old dose of salvation himself. Yes, sir, me. And then he tries to attribute what's going on and all this killing to back in the dark ages and the uh, uh, crusades and people that did things like that in the name of Christ. Let me tell you something. If I've read some of these things correctly, I know that things were done in the name of Christ and as far as religion itself, but no true, born-again, fundamental, Bible-believing Christians ever been guilty of that. Catholicism was guilty. Other religions were guilty, but hey, not, and they named the name of Christ. You know, everybody names the name of Christ. They do it today. That doesn't mean they're saved. You got to have Jesus in your heart, not just on your mind. You got to have it on a piece of paper, brother. You got to have it. You can't write it in a book and say, that's it. You got to have it in your heart. And so don't come telling me that I or anybody like me has ever cut anybody's head off or wanted to cut anybody's head off, except one or two. Uh, but <laughs> listen, my friend, I've never wanted to do that to my worst enemy. Now, praise God, don't blame me for that. Don't blame me with your stupidity. Some people think they're so smart and they're as ignorant as they can be. Now, the tide is rising. Evil is rising. Nuclear weapons are being built by countries who have vowed to kill Jews and Americans. Now, I could take time and paint this picture darker than it already is and that I've already said. 2 Timothy 3.13, the Bible says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. I'm telling you, they're deceived. Young people, they're deceived. They're lying to you. If they say anything truthful, that uh, evolution has truth about it, just act. They're just ignorant. Don't accept that or any other false doctrine. Get in the Bible. Hallelujah. Get in the Bible. You're safe. Boy, you get between these pages and you're safe because this is the truth and the truth will make you free. Hallelujah. All of these sorrows and sufferings going on in our world today are because of one man's sin, Adam. Now look at all the sinners that are doing it. All the sinners that are disobeying God and not listening to God's Word. Sin has brought two great problems to this, uh, to the peoples of that world. And one of them is we have an individual problem. And then we have an international problem. The answer for the individual problem is found in another individual, Jesus. No salvation in any other, just Jesus Christ. So for any individual in here that wants to go to heaven, you may go to heaven if you'll accept Jesus Christ. And he's the only salvation there is. There is no other salvation. He is your Savior today. And then, of course, the answer for the international problem, believe it or not, is found in a nation. Now, every individual is a sinner by nature and by choice and promised the sinner God has promised the sinner a Savior. In Genesis 3, 21, unto Adam also to his wife did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. Now these coats are a type of Christ made unto us righteousness. This was a divinely provided garment that the first sinners might be made fit for the presence of God. Revelation 19, 8, and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Now the garment in Scripture is a symbol of righteousness. In the bad sense, it symbolizes self-righteousness. How many self-righteous people do you know? And this is the, uh, the awfulest way to live your life, thinking that you are righteous in yourself when in reality you're not. Now this is the best that a moral man or a religious man can do under the law uh, he can't do any better. Just be or act self-righteous. Now in the good sense, the garment symbolizes the righteousness of God upon all them that believe. In Romans chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says, but now, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith 
of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. So then the righteousness of God is neither an attribute of God nor the changed character of a believer, but it is Christ Himself. Jesus Christ is the righteousness of God. So then, my friend, uh, He is the one who fully met our, in our stead and on our behalf the demand of the holy law, and I mean everything that law demanded of you or me, we could not fulfill, but He did for us. So then you and I are free in Him. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So Jesus bore our sins, paid the penalty in full, made a way for a righteous God to bestow salvation upon the believing sinner and at the same time maintain His righteousness by satisfying the just requirements of His holy law which sinners broke. We all broke the law. You're guilty, I'm guilty, everybody's guilty. And nobody can do anything about that. You are guilty, I am guilty. But Jesus took our guilt. Hallelujah. And said, let him go free. I set him free. I paid his debt. I paid it all. Every bit of it. Now, old Sammy K, that little old cussing, hell-raising sinner that was going straight to hell, just as wide open as he could go, hallelujah, I snatched him out, I picked him up, I saved his soul for time and eternity. Hey, glory to God, that's my Savior. With all of this provision given by God, man failed, man failed to receive it. Look at the people in the world today that will not receive Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Now man's stubborn rejection caused the formation of nations. This is what happened. And because these nations were made up of sinners, they became hostile toward each other. And look at the world now, nations against nations. Kingdoms against kingdoms. Jesus prophesied. He spoke and said, in the end time, that's the way it would be. That will come. And so this is before us right now. You cannot deny that we're having those very things happen in our day. All of this brought about the tremendous problems that we have in our world right this moment. Now, a nation is needed. For an individual, an individual was needed. For a nation... A nation is needed. Now, we have a righteous nation that we're going to have to have in order for the other nations to live and be blessed. Now, to bring this nation about, God called Abraham from the Ur of Chaldees, saved his soul, and sent him toward Canaan land. God saved him and gave him an unconditional promise. Unconditional means there are no conditions. In other words, if God said, I will do this if you will do that, that's a conditional covenant. But when God gives a promise and says, I will, and doesn't say whether you do whatever you want to do or not, that's an unconditional covenant. And this promise God gave Abraham is unconditional. Hey, that make this what Abraham does. God said, I will. And here's what he said. He said, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Hallelujah. Hey, God gave an individual to save individuals. Jesus, God will give a nation to be a blessing to all this earth one day. Genesis 12, 2, And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all, all families of the earth be blessed. We might be looking to our beloved America right now. I'm looking a little bit beyond America to Israel. I'm looking to Israel, y'all. I'm not looking to America. I believe America could possibly be blown off the face of this earth because we've forgotten God. We were in, we had God, we had God. Praise God, we got blessed. We have the greatest nation in the world and we're treating God like a pay tramp. Pay, pay, pay train, treating a tramp. We are not treating God right. So don't get so lifted up in pride. I mean, be proud of your country. I love my country. Don't get me wrong. I'm not putting America down, but they're scaring me. I mean, I never would have thought we'd have had a president that talks like this man talks. I've never heard such stuff. You say, oh, brother, he's my kind. Hey, you get up and go out of here right now. 
I don't want you around me. I tell you right now, if you lie like that, I'm going to hold my pocketbook. I don't trust people that believe like that. Man, I don't believe in that, that kind of stuff. Now, this nation is Israel. This nation is Israel, not America. We look at little Israel today, and it looks hopeless for her. It looks like, man, she can't make it. She's just not going to do it. Boehner invited Netanyahu to come and speak to Congress, and all that just blew their mind. They just can't stand it because a man's got a little sense, got a little gray matter between his ears. Hey, that he's going to speak to Congress. He's the best one in the whole world right now that should because he knows more about this thing than anybody up there or in any other nation. And I'm not claiming he's a born-again believer because I don't think he is, but he's got some sense. I said, Brother Sammy, I don't agree with you. <laughs> a lot of others don't either. But now remember these promises God gave unconditionally. It makes no difference how many sinners reject Jesus Christ. I'm saved. Hey, it makes no difference. Everybody in here says, I don't believe in Jesus. I do. Hey, it don't make a difference. Everybody in here goes to hell. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. I believe in Jesus today, thank God. I've been washed in the blood of the Son of God. He's my Savior. Praise His holy name. I love Him today for what He's done for me. Now, no matter what Abraham and his seed did or does, Israel shall be saved, the Bible says. God could not depend on frail and weak men, human beings. So for this fulfillment of these promises, he promises salvation to the believing sinner, and he promises to make the Jewish nation a great nation. That's a promise. Promise. God promises that little Israel over there is going to be the greatest nation on the earth pretty soon. Now, you can't do anything about it, and I can't either. It's going to happen. It's an unconditional promise. Human, humanity has failed in com, coming to God's salvation. Israel has failed in being what they ought to be for God, and they've been scattered all over the world. Jews are everywhere scattered. But all believers in Jesus Christ, every single born-again believer is going to be in heaven soon. Say, so, Brother Samuel, but I may get lost for again. Yeah, can't happen. You say, if you've been saved, you can't get lost. Because, brother, when God said it, he meant it. And he said, him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He says, whenever you get saved, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. He said, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. So you couldn't get lost if you tried to. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. You couldn't get lost if you tried to, but who wants to? I'm glad that I got born. I got born again when I did. I'm glad that it's lasted all these years, and I'm telling you, I'll be shouting on the hills of glory soon. You will too. Believe it or not, soon all nations will be blessed because of Israel's restoration. The present international situation is due to the fact that Israel is not in its rightful place in the promised land, under its coveted king, Jesus. See, it's all Jesus anyway. Jesus saved souls, and Jesus will rule and reign on the throne in Jerusalem pretty soon. I'm talking about on this earth. He's going to rule and reign in the kingdom age. Not until Israel is given its place in Palestine, under its coveted king. Uh, from the line of David... Will real peace come to this world? It's not going to come to this world any other way. Now, not until then will the nation be a blessing to the entire world. And the nation is named right here in the Bible. It's Israel. God called Abraham. He said, you're going to be the one, your lineage. I made a covenant with Isaac, your son, one with Jacob, your grandson. And that's where the covenant is, with that line. That's the line from which Jesus came. And brother, according to the flesh. And so it's going to come just like God's Word says. In Genesis 15, 18, under thy seed have I given this land. Are you listening? God's already given it to them. All the way from the Nile to the Euphrates. All of that land over there. All of it's theirs. They're not occupying it right now because they're in unbelief. But the day's coming pretty soon. They're going to own it all and occupy it. Whew. 
God's plan will soon come to complete fruition in spite of perilous times. Isaiah, I read this and I close. I want to read Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 1. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass. It's going to come to pass. That's a fact. In the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations, all nations, if America still exists, that's us too. All nations, the Bible says, shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against a nation. Uh -uh. Neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of of the Lord. The day is coming when Israel will be back in her place. She'll own that land and Jesus is coming to rapture the church before the tribulation. At the end of the tribulation we're coming back to the Mount of Olives on this earth and Jesus will rule on the throne of David. And brother, it'll be a golden age, a golden age when we come back to be with Him. Now if you're not saved you better get saved. And if you don't think you're going to need salvation, you better think again because you're going to need Jesus one day. I don't care who you are, by streaming or here in this church, you're going to need Jesus. Let's stand to our feet and bow our heads for a moment. If you're here today, you're not saved and you'd like to get saved, the altar's open. We invite you to come down this aisle and just bow here and we'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved or else we'll... Uh, We'll take you in a room privately if that's what you'd like and we'll show you how to be saved. I want you to just do what the Lord would have you to do. If you don't move, we're going to go home. Our Father, in Jesus' name, speak to hearts today. Help us to realize God made an unconditional promise and that promise has got to come to pass sometime. I don't know how soon. I don't know when and how you're going to work it all out, but you promised and we're waiting on that promise to be fulfilled. We're looking for Jesus to come and take us home to be with Him because you promised that. The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. We're comforted in our hearts today because of the Word of God. Bless now we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.